Good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero coming to you live with Millennium Talks, episode number 31, with our special guest today, Lindsay Hart from Ithaca, New York. And if it's your first time tuning in Millennium Talks, we interview real estate rock stars from all over the world who are giving us our their real stories and inspiring us along the way. So let's get started. And as as you're watching, if you get inspired or you see any kind of nuggets of information, Lindsay starts spitting fire for us. Just, you know, you can comment below. We can bring that up on the screen. And if you want to subscribe to our our broadcast at any time, you can also just click that first comment there. Our messenger bot will contact you. And I promise we will only let you know when we're going live. Nothing else. No spam. No coaching whatsoever. So in the beginning, there was Lindsay Hart. <laughs> <laughs> so Lindsay, tell, tell, tell us a little bit. First of all, thank you for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, let's start out with Wait, how you is, began. What what inspired you to get in real estate? How long have you been in real estate? You're, you know, I'll just say you, you, and I have, you and I have a little history with the video thing. Because remember one of the first classes? I know that sounded awful, right? I need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that did sound awful. You never know what we're going to say, That's right? right. You never know what we're going to say. So um, you, the class, I am now doing more video thanks to your class. So I have to give you a little shout out. Jamie, yeah. Well, I mean, it was you. For some reason, I think you were you were scared of video, and then once I said, "Like, dude, just do it," and you started doing it, and you're like, "Wait, people actually like me," and then like it just. Yeah, see, the, that's the thing. I just stopped caring if people liked me or not. I just <laughs> put it out there. So your class has worked. So thank you. So thank here you. I am now doing a live interview with you. Ah. And what? So I started in real estate in 2005. Oh, same year as me. So 13, right? 13 years. And, uh, but I started out as an admin. I didn't get my license until 2007. So I've only been really selling and doing that kind of real estate since 2007, 2008, and really got into it in 2009. So those first couple of years, it takes a while. So tell me then, like, what made you, did you start as an admin just to kind of get in the business, see how it was, or did you, was it just something you got pulled in? I wasn't even looking for a job. You know my broker, um, <laughs> Melissa Miller with Remax, right? Yeah, I wasn't even looking broker. for a job. I was working for the local newspaper, and I she was an account that I called on. So I had I have a really unique background because I knew half of the realtors in the area anyway because they were my customers and clients with the local daily. So I called on realtors and car dealerships. So I went to talk to Melissa Miller of Remax because she was a new brokerage at that time. And so I went in there to sell her this ad product because that's my background, marketing. I graduated from Ithaca College Park School. So I went to sell her an ad and she looked me dead in the face. She goes, do you want a job? And I'm like, I already have a job. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how I ended up with Remax. So I started with her. I helped her build up her office um, August 22nd, 2005. I'll never forget. I started at Remax and I've been there ever since. Well, shout out to Melissa for recognizing talent when it was there. She said, this girl's trying to sell me. She's almost selling me. We've got to get her into selling some real estate. That's awesome. So your duties were like from admin capacity in the beginning, just kind of learning the business and what, what was that like? And would you recommend it to somebody else? I know my wife actually did the same thing. She started it, it just because she wanted to see what real estate was like before. And yeah. I think you guys have similar personality types. You like to research and very. We're very organized. Very organized and very detail oriented. Yeah. So, um, I would recommend, and it's funny that you asked that because recently there's a lot of people who are thinking about getting into the real estate industry. And, and so I, I say, wow, the market must be good because there's a lot of people thinking about getting into real estate. So you know the market's good when people are like, oh, I can do that. And I don't discourage people, but um, here's the deal. So I started a team and it came about because I was so busy. I got to the point where I was so busy that I was handing off business. And so why not? mentor somebody, bring somebody in and be able to hand that business off to them and help them grow. So it actually started with um, this one girl, I say girl, woman approaching me to join. And um, I explained to her, I said, it's not easy. And funny enough, somebody actually said this a couple months ago, I heard real estate is a hard way to make an easy living. And so I explained all the downfalls and, you know, 
people aspect of it because houses are easy. Houses don't change, people do. So the people aspect of it, the amount of work that goes into it, what you need to know, sure you get your, um, you take the class and you get your license, but there's more to it than just taking the class, taking the test and getting your license. So um, I explained to her all the downfalls, the dues involved, all the money up front basically, um, even though the threshold is still kind of low to get into real estate in terms of investment, it it takes you, I told them you're not going to make money probably in the first two years and it's hard work and you're grinding. So I recommend to anybody to understand the industry as a whole and the terms and what really goes into the day to day of it, start as admin. And I think I had a unique advantage. I had a wonderful mentor. I started in at the ground level. So I learned the systems. I learned what the MLS was. I learned all the lingo. I met all the agents, which I had a unique advantage anyway, because I had already met them through my previous job because I was selling ad space to them. So I was familiar with the agents to begin with. So when I walked into this role, um, it just expanded upon that. So, I mean, when I first started, I was so confused by the lingo. I, a selling agent and a listing agent are the same thing, <laughs> but a buying agent, it's different. I was like, I'm so confused. Wait, are you the seller's agent or the listing agent? And I realized they're the same thing. They're nice. in the the term. <laughs> and it's funny. I hear that a lot from newer agents. They're like, wait, they're the selling agent or the listing agent. And I'm like, okay, here's the deal. We got to compartmentalize and keep things straight. So coming in on the ground level, and working with agents closely and doing, you know, the paperwork for them and answering the phones and understanding the dynamics, I would recommend that to anybody. If you're thinking about getting into real estate, find a team that you like, interview a team, and some teams may even pay for your class and um, your first year's dues. But that's the best way, I think, to get started in real estate if you're considering it, because they've got the knowledge, they can mentor you, they can help you. They can also, you know, give you leads if you're, you know, if they're so busy, but be prepared to do work that you might not want to do. It is work, but then yeah. you get to that point where, you know, you can start a team and then you give somebody else that work. Well, I, I think it, it brings up a lot of good points that like you learn the systems and the foundation of a good business before you were busy enough to even need those systems. So, so often agents start and maybe, you know, they're really good at prospecting. They get busy, they start selling. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I need systems. I need organization. And while they're trying to figure that out, they're losing so much business because it's so disorganized and it's just can be chaotic if you're super busy and you don't have the systems. Yeah. So <laughs> what, besides being an admin, I guess also, would you say like they could just shadow somebody or be an intern or like any number of things, right? To see what we really do every single day because it's not like million dollar listing, right? I love it. I love the memes because the memes are so true. That's why they're so funny. But, you know, a lot of folks, there's a misconception and I know I've blogged about this. There's a misconception about what realtors actually do and how we get paid and, and if we're worth it. And we don't just stick a sign in the ground and disappear. They have that's that's the magical thing about us right we do all the behind the scenes stuff we take care of all the stressful stuff and we shelter our clients from that so it's a double-edged sword there that we shelter them from it so they're not dealing with that stress and they're not seeing all of that but at the same time then they think that we're not doing anything because they're like oh this went so smooth meanwhile we're on the phone with like the attorney the appraiser the lender, the surveyor, because the survey hasn't been done or certified, or there's something wrong with the septic. And so I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't have hours. I have when um, I open my eyes to when I close my eyes. And right. my kids are always saying, let me get off your phone. Let me get off your phone. And you're like, I'm almost done with this email, right? Well, last, yeah. night, last night, I was sending an offer off around 6 p.m. before we you know had to go to dinner and meet with friends or something. But you know, this thing, right here, I got to say, it's what gets stuff done because we're in that era where it's, you get work done when you can, because you fit so much into your life these days. So let's talk about like your first couple of years. Once you went full time, what were some of the challenges? Um, Cause you started right in, in, in a Remax system, which is different than most people as well. 
what were some of the challenges in the first couple of years that, you know, you came from a marketing background, so you have that strength, which typically most agents don't have. Uh, what were your challenges? A steady paycheck. <laughs> no benefits. I mean, to be honest, that's the, that's the most shocking, I think, to folks who come from a background where they get a steady paycheck. Um, at first, it's, it's not steady, and you have to learn how to um, manage that. But it's also unlimited. So the more you work, the more you can make. You're not limited by a salary or somebody else's arbitrary raises. So you work as hard as you want so you can make as much as you want. Um, and the second hardest thing was building a book of business. You know, you, you really have to grind. You have to take those floor calls. You have to follow up on every lead. And some of them are pretty cold. And some you'll end up showing like 10 houses to somebody who's looking in a $50,000 range. But you do it. And, it. and you get that experience. Plus, I, you know, I started my own team. And I tell my members, I tell my agents that it's if somebody asks you for help, I don't care whether it's 20,000 or 2 million, I will help. That's what it's about. So if you don't chase the dollar and you take every client and make them feel like they're the only client, you will consistently and steadily build your business. I love that. So don't chase the dollar. Uh, I just, yeah, I had a contractor say this to me one time. Because he, he felt like he wasn't getting paid enough. He's like, well, if you sell a $20,000 house, is it the same level of service as like a $2 million house? And I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. Only one level. Just like you said, exceptional level of service regardless of price. Exactly. It's about the client. I'm here to help. And that's what I tell my agents. I said, if somebody asks you to help, you help. You under promise and over deliver. And that's how you build your business. One client at a time. This is a marathon, not a sprint. I know a lot of folks who you hear that they, they just want to make money. They want to make money and understand that you can make money in real estate, but you're self-employed. So you also have to pay self-employment tax and you have to put those quarterly taxes away. So get a good financial planner or business manager when you start your business as well um, and, and be prepared for that. But it's about the client. So you build your business one client at a time. Those people talk. And it's a marathon, not a sprint. So I, that's such a good good point because they, they, they watch these shows and they think like, I'm going to get my license. And then all of a sudden, like the ATM machine is going to be pouring money through my car window. Right. And like you're saying, it's a grind in the beginning. You kind of have to do everything that you have to do. Mm -hmm. And then maybe as you get further along and you get busier, like you're saying, you know, you got busy. So at what point were you busy enough where you felt, ah, I'm going to start adding team members? Because I mean, there's a lot of agents that may be watching that right, watching this right now who have that same problem. So I didn't really plan it. So I know contrary to popular perceptions, I like to plan and be organized and efficient, but I didn't plan the team really. <laughs> it kind of happened. Um, I knew I was getting to the point where I was busy because I had to refer other business off. I just physically could not be in so many places at once. And this is where you get started. It starts with that first client and you just start the wheel rolling. And once you get that, that wheel rolling and you've got the motion and things just start to just keep coming in, that's, that's what you want. You want the steady just to keep things rolling in. And I got to that point where I had to turn some business away because I physically with a family and my other volunteer commitments, I could not be there. And um, I tried to do the team thing, uh, I think back in 2013, and it didn't quite take off. It didn't work. I didn't have a grasp on it. Um, wasn't really there. And through actually my volunteer work with in leadership with the Ithaca Board of Realtors and NISAR, New York State Association of Realtors, I was able to learn more. And then when the time did come where I was approached that somebody wanted to join my team, it worked this time. Um, the, you know, I had, I had a layout, I had a format to, to help me deal with how to, how to even structure a team, especially within Remax. So it just, it seemed to click and work this time. The timing was right. I mean, it's true. Real estate, whether it's your actual business or selling home, it's all about timing. So then tell me what was different. 
what was it, what did you think you did wrong the first time or you just was it just the timing of it or yeah, it just was the timing i think i tried to push and i didn't i was in i wasn't in the business long enough i would have to say i wasn't in the business long enough i think i tried to push it too hard and i didn't really completely understand how the structure would work and i think the timing wasn't right i i thought i was busy but i was not as busy as i could have been sorry we had this throwing photos up there Sorry, I get click happy, and then all of a sudden, stuff just pops up to the broadcast. <laughs> um, so so it just worked. It worked this time. Uh, it was at the point where I was busy enough. I thought I was busy before, but not really. Now I was busy enough. I had the business rolling in. I it just it just worked. It clicked, and you have to find the right people. You have to get the right people on the right bus at the right time. You have to have the right driver, and you go. Oh, that's a train. Here's the bus. Here's the bus. Wheels on the bus. We got kids. You know. <laughs> we got kids. Right? Wheels on the bus. Go round and round. What? Um. How did you identify those people? Then you said like the first first one found you, but then like now you're starting to add pieces to the puzzle. Is it you know team members that complement one another? Mm -hmm. And then like how do you sustain? Like in a busy market, it's easy to have a team, right? We're in a seller's market right now. We have leads for days, and then you can kind of. But now it has to, you know, it's a, it's a roller coaster um, and it's cyclical. So how do you sustain a team through the solar sure. market? Like I'm all about, you know, transparency and honesty and I prepare them. I do worst case scenario. I say it may not always be like this. So um, be prepared for there to be some downtimes and you, you have to do the work too. So it's, I, I got really lucky. I have a great team. Um, the first woman approached me and it worked out. She started out shadowing a little bit and then she got her license very quickly and she just got it. Like she understood and she just took off. Um, the second person, um, Tiffany, Tiffany Beck told, she just, she had been in real estate in an admin position for a year or two prior. So she came in on as admin and just the timing all worked and fell into place. It wasn't like, I couldn't have planned it. Like there, there was, I tell you there's divine intervention because I couldn't have planned it. So I can't take all the credit. There's no magic formula. There's nothing magic that I did. So I can't say, hey, this is what you need to do. You need to do A, B, C, D, and this is what will happen. It really was the right place at the right time and just following instincts. And my team, it's Aaron Gray, Tiffany Bechtold, and Karen Potter, and all different personalities, all different age groups, and different areas too. And they just work together. They, they get it. They understand that they have to do the work. And... Um, Tiffany, like I said, she had been in admin position before. So again, she started from the ground up and I make all of my team members do some admin and work from the ground up and shadow me so that they understand what's involved and that it's, it's, you can do a lot of work for no money if it doesn't close, if things don't close, or you can, you know, do a lot of work and three months later you get paid. So you have to be you know, persistent. You have to be persistent and patient. And again, it's like a marathon. So I would say if you're looking to build a team, interview folks, but um, make sure that they have the drive and they're not afraid of work and that they get a good base before you bring them on. And of course, you know, whatever you offer as a team leader for your team, that, that can be attractive to folks. Just like I tell sellers and buyers, interview agents, you're going to be working with this person closely for six months. You right. have to make sure that you like them. They share your communication style and that you can work together because that's what it's about. Well, and, and I think sometimes folks are so anxious to start a team and build a team. They're just like, oh my gosh, here, can you fog this mirror? Okay, great. You're on my team. You too? Oh, you want to be here? Oh, you're on my team too. And then then they're wondering why it doesn't work because they didn't, like you said, interview the people and, and kind of get it get it started right. But let, let's segue into leadership because you mentioned, you know, through your, your volunteer stuff, through your chamber of commerce, and I know you've been heavily involved on the local level at the Ithaca Board of Realtors. You've had every single leadership position available right? Secretary, treasurer, president, vice president, president elect, past president, president after that, you know, tell us, <laughs> tell us how like, 
know, because I think so often people are like, I don't want to get involved with leadership. Look, what's in it for me? I don't see any benefit to my business, to me personally. So why should I? Mm-hmm. What has it meant to you? Because I know it's been a crucial part of your success. Yeah, it's funny because I just heard that from an agent. They were like, I don't want to get involved in that. That takes away from my business. And I, I smirk a little because it's only enhanced my business. And it makes you more efficient with your time. So you you better you have better time management. But not only that, you get to learn or you get to you get to be with your peers. You learn more about the industry, the behind the scenes, which is another facet of your business. The more you can understand about the industry, I think the better you are equipped to help buyers and sellers too. Because there's a lot happening in happening in New York right now in terms of um, legislative priorities and government affairs. And if Realtors do not have a seat at the table. They will be, they won't have a voice. So that's part of it. That's a huge part of it because that affects our business. That affects private property rights. So there's, you know, I I guess I've taken a liking to the industry and what happens behind the scenes. Um, But volunteering and being involved, I think raises the level, raises the bar, raises the level of professionalism as an agent and it, it only has enhanced my business. So some folks are like, well, you were president and you did this and this and this. And I was, I actually had up to that point, I, when I was president of the Ethical Board of Realtors, I had the best year in real estate that I've ever had. And it's just surpassing. It's, I mean, it just keeps growing every year. So it doesn't take away from your business. It only enhances it. And then of course involved at the state level where you get to meet agents from all over and which is cool, which is where I met you. And you mm-hmm. get to share ideas. You get to share tactics. You can talk about team building. You can talk about what's happening behind the scenes. You can talk about what your board is doing and how you tackle certain problems. So you get a different perspective and it just teaches you how to work with all different personalities. Cause we know we have that in real estate. <laughs> right? So, but, but then you also, you know, I don't want to make it all about money, but then you get referrals. I mean, you and I have done referrals from Rochester to Ithaca Very and I, right. Girl. Yeah. yeah, Sunday driving. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, you know, the well, we're Remax, so we got to hang out in Vegas for the R4 convention. But I'm also involved in the NYSAR Leadership Academy, the fourth um, session of the Leadership Academy. And I have gotten to meet so many great people. And in fact, I'm going to have dinner with one of my um, Academy uh, colleagues on Friday. And the friendships that are built and it's it's amazing. It does not take away from your business. It only enhances it. In fact, I've given out a referral and I'm getting a couple of referrals just because people moving into the Ithaca area I and mean, it's still popular. It's a growing area. Surprising, you know, people still want to live in New York State, even though it has high taxes. So right. it's a great way. It's a great way to enhance your business. Well, and, and I think not just from the referral standpoint, but if you become better at leadership, it's only going to make you a better business person because in real estate, so often we have to make hard choices. And if you're a good leader, you can make those choices, you know, like, oh, we have an appraisal issue. Oh, we have this. And it, it like, if you're used to it and you're working at the, on your board or the state level, it's like, okay, here's our problem. Here's what we need to do. Here's how we solve it. And it's just like, like yeah. this, where somebody who's never seen those kinds of challenges, mm-hmm. you're like, ah, they're the one that calls you on the other end. Like, Help, what's going yeah. on? Our whole deal is exploding. <laughs> And you definitely have to be a problem solver. You have to, if you want to get into real estate, you have to be a problem solver. You have to be, have good time management and you have to know how to deal with people. I mean, you may, like, you don't have to like people, <laughs> but you have to know how to deal with them. Everybody says you have to be a people person. Well, not really. You just have to know how to handle different personalities and to keep people calm. But in a leadership role, absolutely. It's just, especially if you're building a team, not only are you dealing with other agents, um, personalities in a transaction, but your buyers and sellers and attorneys and appraisals and lenders, but you're also bringing on, you know, your team members. So you have to learn how to lead them because I want my team to succeed. I don't want to, you know, for them to always be on this team if they don't want to, I want them to, to be able to grow their business. So I'm going to give them the tools and the tricks and, you know, the tips to get them to grow. So as a leader, you need, you need that. And, attending the state meetings and being involved in the local level in terms of, you know, chairing committees and being in the uh, executive board that it's, it's only helped because it helps. If you stop learning, you stop growing. 
so as a as a realtor plus you know we always have to take the 22 and a half credit hours of continuing education to renew our license but if you stop learning you stop growing and you're you know in this industry that's constantly changing with technology with how you serve clients with changes in the industry with legislative priorities and financial um priorities and financial you know interest rate products that are changing if you don't stay on top of it you're going to get lost so let's segue then into the you have a work team but you also have a home team right you're not just a a single lady uh nerdy boss babe this was your words not mine um but you also married three children two oh i'm sorry did i give you an extra child um, extra, well if you wanted to count the the oldest oh yes well i think you said that I, sorry but I'm, I think you, that might be why I ended up getting slipped. But so you have two children that are that are were are homeschooled as well. Mm -hmm. So I mean, just how how is this all possible? How can you do it all? What's what's your secret? I'm wondering what I did with my time before kids, before I got busy. Honestly, I had all this time. What did I do? Right. And I, even, and I even find time to go to the gym. I'm like, I don't know. You just do it, right? How do we do anything? We look back and we say, How did we ever do that? You just do. You just find a way and you do it. I have a great support system though, so I can't complain there. Um, my husband is my financial planner, my business manager, so I could not run this business if he did not run that end of it. So, um, so you know, I take care of the business, the house, um, and yeah, I homeschool my kids, which is sort of selfish because it fits with my schedule. And when you homeschool, you can teach them anything, anywhere, anytime, really. So you're not bound to, sitting in the classroom from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. in a desk, talking at them, you know, not saying that that's what class is, but, right. you know, they'll go with me on appointments. I've taken them to the gym. You know, we get to go to the Science Center or, you know, Museum of the Earth or the zoo or on a picnic to the Tiganic Park and learn about, you know, nature at the park or, you know, sound waves at the Science Center. So it's, you find ways to teach them and everything is teachable and they get to cook with me. So there's a math lesson there there's cooking there everything is a learning experience and this is what i want to teach them that you don't have to be sitting in a classroom to be learning everything around you is a learning experience and you can learn from everything around you so that also applies to real estate and leadership if you're paying attention we're given two ears and one mouth so it's better to listen than to talk um and i try to teach them that so you can learn by paying attention and listening and of course, asking questions. So they're in the car with me. We listen to audible books. So, you know, it just, it works. Then I don't have to be, you know, at home at a certain time to pick them up from school. Now, my eight-year-old is going into third grade. He will be in public school in third grade. So I will just have my six, almost seven-year-old for first grade. And that's going to be interesting because they have their own little personalities. So teaching is, God bless teachers. I don't know how they do it in a room with 18 to 20 kids and that young and you have to work with all those little personalities and get them to pay attention oh, no. i don't know how they do it i was thinking like for matt you could say okay kids this is how we're going to compute a mortgage payment today right you can take your interest rate times your <laughs> have you seen we play monopoly and they're like monopoly. Oh, oh these kids they're better than me <laughs> they know it and my six-year-old Asher, he's like, I'm buying Boardwalk in Park Place. And he's like, and he puts houses on them immediately. And then it, it's like he's this little savage with Monopoly. It's crazy. He's ruthless. It's good. But they, you know, they learn to count money. They, they know all that. They, yeah, learning can be fun. It, it doesn't have to be boring. So I fit that in. And it, that, that affects even real estate and leadership. I mean, you can apply that to all facets of your life. So has there been a time with all the volunteer stuff, the family stuff, the real estate stuff where you felt like over scheduled, like you, you, you said yes to too many things. And then if that did happen, how do you kind of dial it back and get your life back? Because I think there's a lot of us, especially younger agents, when you say yes, then they're going to yes you for everything, right? They're like, Wendy's great. Let's get her on this committee. This one, this one, this one, this one. Next, you know, you're like, wait a minute. I have to kind of peel it back a little bit. When you, spread, yeah. when you spread yourself too thin, you're not good to anybody. Um, so 
you gotta you gotta be smart about it and it's okay to say no so you're not the only person that can do anything and everything even though you feel like you do a good job you're not the only person that can chair a certain committee or you're not the only person that can run a certain thing so part of leadership is taking a step back and realizing you're not the only person that can do everything and empowering the folks around you and building them up to to encourage them to participate and know that they can do it. So I think that that's what good leadership is, is learning how to say no and encouraging folks to step up and know that they can do it um, because you're not always going to be there. I mean, real estate was here before me. I'm not the first person to do this. I'm learning from everybody before me and I'm looking ahead too. Uh, so you got to be flexible, but steady. You got to know when to say no and when to say yes. You got to know when to lead um, in front and you've got to know when to step back and let your team members or committee members, whoever it is, step out front. Yeah. And I heard a quote recently, which kind of resonates with what we're talking about. You know, good leaders don't have followers. Good leaders identify other leaders to follow them in their footsteps, you know, so it's not just saying like, I'm the best, you need to follow me, but you yourself, you know, there's a, a hashtag, I think it was last year, the year before about, you know, replace yourself, <laughs> I didn't see that. finding people to replace you as a young leader so that it's not recycling the same people. We have to kind of uh, identify it, encourage it and yeah. like do stuff like this where you can, you know, demonstrate to people what leadership is and, and, and why they should get involved. Mm -hmm. um, that, that extends into your business too. So don't think that it's, it's, they're mutually exclusive. They work together. That's why I say it enhances your business because if you can make yourself a better person that way in terms of serving, because leadership is serving, um, you're giving your time, you're choosing to give your time, knowledge and expertise free. It's only going to help you when you go to a client and say, look, here's what I can do for you. And this is why I'm worth X percent, right? Know your worth and That's take true. them with you into the real world. It's, yeah, I think it's a win-win. All right. So we're kind of winding down to the end of our broadcast. And we always ask this question, uh, you know, if you were, if we traveled back in time, I had my DeLorean, Michael J. Fox, we go back and we go to 2005 okay. and we see, little Lindsay Hart with her nerdy glasses and she's like, I just, I just leave in the paper and I'm gonna, I'm getting into this real estate business. What kind of advice would you have for her and or any new agent coming into the business, giving the knowledge, expertise, experience and everything you've had now over the last 13 years? I think I've, I think I've given it all. I have no idea what I would go back and tell myself, honestly, because I didn't even think I'd be here. I did not picture this. I had no idea that I'd be doing this or that I, I, I didn't even, you know, I think sometimes people get into real estate because they know it and they love it and they've always seen themselves doing it, but I just fell into it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that, you know, I went to Ithaca College Park School of uh, Communications, Marketing, Ad, PR. I thought that I would be, you know, some PR person. And, you know, I guess naturally I'm a promoter. So if I find something I like and that really works or I get really excited about it, I'll promote it. Um, so, you know, this is just another, this is a way of promotion. You promote yourself as an agent and your services and you promote houses, but I never even thought of this as a career. So I have no idea what I would go back and tell myself in 2005, because I was like, this is a job. I like to, you know, <laughs> but if you're, I mean, the advice I would give, cause I get, I do get asked this a lot just because I'm known in my little community for real estate. I do get asked, well, is it hard to get into real estate? I'm thinking about getting into real estate. And I said, well, I will sit down and have a conversation with you. And I will tell you the good, the bad, the ugly, and, and, and lay it out there. But it can be ugly. It can be frustrating. Um, you don't get paid for months on end sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the smallest deals can take the longest or the most work. And, you know, the biggest deals can be smooth. It's, it's. Yeah. I, have no idea I think what I'm hearing you say is that you should plan for the future, yeah. right? Have a business plan, have a financial plan. You know, it, this is a business, right? And like you said, 
it's not, it, it's, it, it is feast or famine many times, you know, when you're in a seller's market, it's great, but this has to level out at some point. And then if you spend all the money, like you won the lottery, it's going to be a problem, right? You have to be a planner. You pretty much have to be a planner, well-organized, patient, persistent. And it is, it can be a hard way to make an easy living, but it can be rewarding. I mean, if you enjoy problem solving and helping people and that person, they're like, thank you so much for getting me into my home or for selling my home. There's that, there's, that's its own reward, but it can be trying at times. So you should have a great support system behind you. You need, you need a good support system. You need to plan. This is a business um, and goals, set specific goals, not unattainable high in the sky goals. I mean, those are good to have, but if you don't meet them, you'll just get, you'll just get deflated and you'll say, why am I even doing this? You have to have specific goals and do a business plan every year. And then stick with it, follow that plan. Cause sometimes you'll get sidetracked, but follow that plan, set specific goals and it's, it's reachable, it's attainable. All right, so I'm gonna close out with that. Do it for the right reasons, set realistic goals, have a plan, you know, cause it all comes down to when the times are slow, you have to ask yourself, why did I get started in the first place? And if it's just a job or it's just a way to make money, then it's time for you to get out. It's, you know, my opinion, like very much like you said, it's rewarding when you can help somebody who's a first time home buyer and just the look on their face when they get that first home, it really is the American dream. And that's what I always come back to when people are like, oh, why do you do this? Like we could sell anything on the planet, but we choose to be in real estate. And I, I think that's something to remind everybody who's watching. You know, be proud of what you do. Real estate is fantastic. The sky's the limit. Flexible hours and limited income. You know, but you do have to set your schedule and work your plan. Find a good team with heart. Get a team with heart. Yeah. Hashtag. Hashtag. Well, thank you, Lindsay. I really appreciate it. I know you have an 11 o'clock appointment yeah. that you have to get to. So anything else? Closing words you want to say? Go get them. Make it about the client and you can't go wrong. Okay. Make it about the client. You can't go wrong. You heard it here. First, last, and in between from Lindsay Hart. Lenny Who Talks, episode number 31. Have Thank a great you, day. Man. You're welcome.